Welcome to my flaps design tutorial. I discussed the aileron design in the last video. Now we are moving on to the other movable surface on the wing. Flaps are used to lower the stall speed and therefore take off and landing speeds and distances. Some airplanes do not even have flaps. This simplifies the design and saves weight, but reduces the speed range of the airplane, which is the difference between stall speed and maximum cruise speed. The flaps work by increasing the lift of the wing at the location where they are mounted. So in order to get the most from them, we need to maximize their area and use the most suitable design for creating lift. From the size point of view, full span flaps would be best. But since we need to leave room for the ailerons, it will be a compromise. This sketch shows the definitions used for the flap design which is similar to the aileron definitions, with cord, span and start and end wing stations. To maximize the flap area, it should extend from the inboard end of the aileron to as close to practical to the fuselage. The flap shown here has a constant cord, which simplifies building it, but its relative cord varies because the wing is tapered. We also need to consider some practical aspects when sizing the flap. The flap hinges will be attached to the wing structure, which consists of ribs and rest bar. It simplifies things if the flap cord is not too different from the aileron cord, so that a straight rest bar can be used. First I want to show you the difference the flap design has on the lift it can produce. Here is an example of several different flap types that were used on the same airfoil, Anaka 23012. The number that is the most important one is the maximum lift coefficient, or CL max, of the airfoil. For comparison, all the flaps have the same relative cord, 20%. The basic airfoil without the flap can reach a CL max of 1.54. This is a dimensionless number. The basic formula which I'm showing here for the whole airplane in level flight says that the weight has to equal the lift which is then only a function of the wing area, the airplane lift coefficient and the dynamic pressure, and therefore the air density and speed squared. Converted, the CL is the lift divided by the dynamic pressure and the wing area. But the CL of the whole airplane is not the same as the two-dimensional airfoil section CL, because some other parts, like the fuselage and tail, also produce lift in various directions, not just the wing. To keep the story short, we can assume that the airplane CL Max is usually a little lower than the airfoil CL Max. To get back to the flap, look at the second row showing a split flap. Deflected to 60 degrees, it can reach a CL Max of 2.53. It also produces a lot of drag and is therefore better suited to decreasing the landing distance than the takeoff distance. Deflecting any flap down also causes a nose down pitching moment. The pitching mo moment coefficient is called CM. The pitching moment has to be balanced by an increased elevator up deflection, so the more negative it is, the more up elevator is needed, which is undesirable but unavoidable. A simple plane flap can produce a CL max of 2.38 at the same deflection, but with a higher pitching moment and a little less drag than a split flap. A hinged slotted flap is more effective. It can get to a CL max of 2.76 at 50 degrees deflection. But the best choice for increasing lift is a slotted Fowler flap, where the flap moves aft on rails and besides deflecting down, it also increases the wing area. At 30 degrees, it reaches a CL max of up to 2.9. It also creates the highest pitch down moment. So which flap design you select is a choice between simple construction and effectiveness. Airplanes that are designed for high cruise speeds with small wing areas will require more efficient flaps such as simple slotted or even double slotted Fowler flaps to get the stall speed down. A slotted or Fowler flap has to be carefully designed for a certain gap between wing and flap, depending on the deflection. If it is wrong, the normally attached airflow on the flap upper surface may separate and cause a loss of lift 
and potentially undesirable rolling moments. For those airplanes where even a fowler flap is not enough, use slats in addition for even higher lift. I said earlier that the flaps will not be full span, so what does that mean for lift? The sketch shows the lift distribution of a wing with flaps up and underneath is a lift distribution with flaps extended. The lift is locally increased only where the flaps are. The transition of the lift at the end of the flaps is not abrupt, but the pressure bleeds off through vortices, as it does at the wing tips. Calculating the lift distribution accurately is not real simple. This is done with specialized programs. Therefore, we can just start the design by estimating the lift the flaps will add based on the airfoil lift coefficient at various stations along the span. If we are designing the airplane for low drag with flaps extended, the plane flap with a sealed gap is the best choice. This design is typically done on gliders and motor gliders. The gap seal prevents airflow from the lower to upper surface, which would add drag and reduce the lift. The gap in the flaps up cruise configuration should be sealed or minimized for all airplanes for lower drag at higher speeds. Even for a slotted flap, this can be beneficial. Tests have shown that having a lip on the lower surface actually helps increase the lift, even in the extended position. Now you should have a good idea on how to go about adding flaps to an airplane wing. With this, I want to end my video on flaps. In the next one, we will take a look at different wing platforms and what influence the various shapes have.